guitar. I'll give you a small little example. So we'll start off on the fourth fret right here. Basically it'd be like a, a B diminished idea. So four to seven, and then I'm going to use the pinky to roll across to the high skinny B again. Once again, popping it uh, quite a bit. I find when I'm doing this, actually, I'll use my ring finger uh, when I'm actually working on the skinniest string for some reason. The second finger takes care of all the other strings. It just feels more natural to me, so you can try the same thing. So when I'm on the skinny string again, so I have basically fourth fret, hand ring, and then pinky. There's my pink, uh, ring finger coming in there, popping that out. And once again, a six note kind of a cycle. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, by itself. That's it. Now it's quite of a, a percussive sound too. We get quite rapid on that. So now we can just move it up in minor third. So I'll play it slow first. We have a and. a little bit faster. We're back down. You can see it's it's pretty easy to get a pretty rapid sound going on side of this thing. Now let's take it instead of uh, basically on the two strings, let's move this diminished idea possibly across the strings a little bit more to get some more sounds of craziness from space, possibly something like that. So I'm gonna take the idea still staying again in the whole B diminished idea. I'm gonna end up on the 13th fret and 16th fret where I just went up that last idea. But the cool idea here, since diminished is symmetrical, we can move it in a diagonal form here. Diagonal one fret lower. And then we have a cool little a shape going on here. Which is pretty neat. Then I'll move it diagonally again. This time, the shape's gotta change a little bit, so I'm gonna put basically the note G sharp here in. Time lower. So slowly the whole idea would be. Go back if you want it. Welcome back to Fantasy Island again, yes? I love that, I love that freaking show. You know, I would stay up at 10 o'clock watching that stuff, having like sour cream and onion chips, getting fat, like a fat little kid. Drinking That's soda. back when you were fat? That's back when I was fat. All right. Back yeah. in the fat days. That was the fat days. Uh, responsible because of Love Boat and Dukes of Hazard and Fantasy Island and, and sour cream and onion chips. Oh, well, don't forget, well, speaking of Fantasy Island, we should suggest to people to check out the Korean drummer, the Fantasy Island tattoo-looking guy. Oh, that would be... <laughs> that, I, that URL was sickening. <laughs> it's crazy. Okay, so I'm going to take this stuff now, since we talked a bit about the concept of pentatonic, and we talked about some diminished ideas and the Hector Villalobos ideas. Now I'm going to put it inside of, like, some three-note-per-string scales. Uh, the major scales, any of the modes, it'll work for any of the modes. So. For this point, I'm going to just kind of work with possibly an E major scale. And first, I'll just play it like starting from the seventh degree. So that's basically one more time. Sure. Play the scale. Sure. technique inside of this. Once again, using the whole Hector Villalobos idea. That's it's kind of became so integral and part of my playing. I, I can't believe it that uh, it's some such a small little song has kind of made itself happen inside the whole thing. But you didn't study classical though, right? I did study classical actually. It was the first thing that my dad tormented me to do. It was lessons with a guy named Gary Santucci from Spain. Should I be looking at you or the camera? Camera. Yeah. It was uh, lessons from Spain, some guy, I was of course living in Canada, but he made me learn uh, things like that, but I didn't really learn about this Hector Villalobos guy until later. And just the idea of the interval, jumping a st string jumping is a very simple thing to do. But you were playing nylon string the whole bit? like Nylon string, the had the footstool? Footstool. Everything, wow. Well, no, I kind of play it like this, because that footstool thing looked a little, you know. Right, yeah, yeah. How many years did like? you put into that? Still putting years into it now. Oh, you're still studying? I do, when I have time. 
which is and you've never. played acoustic pieces on records like when the aliens come has sort of a parker acoustic well there's piece always on it. i always love having the nylon string going on there like there's it happens a lot inside of that because it's just a part of the love of mine right from flamenco or the spanish or the nylon string guitar it just adds a nice mixture i think a combination of the really heavy crunchy <laughs> a nice nylon on top of that kind of works well so back to the locrian idea basically now the idea is I'm going to be jumping a string again. So sticking with some, inside a Locrian pattern, I'm going to be basically playing 11, 12, and 14. And then popping the 11th fret out on the D string as part of the pattern. So that could be part of the little shape to start off with by itself. You can just kind of follow that through the next shape of the scale. Part of the scale. And the last part. Once again, noticing there, uh, my third finger came in again to use because it felt better the, the ring finger there on the skinny string. But all the other times have been the second finger. Now, once again, nails help because you can really get in there and start popping them. Unfortunately, I like to do tapping stuff too, so you gotta. Can you show the nail again? I, I didn't have it in the shot. I was zooming in on what sure. you were playing. So, okay, I'll go right on. from what you said with the. So I need to have nails, basically, as you can see them on the, on the fingers here. It really helps to kind of pop it out. And that comes from playing classical guitar, too. So the people that play classical guitar kind of relate to that. But if you're tapping, as I do also, you're kind of cursed. Because as you know, you can't have mixed nails when you're tapping on the guitar. So it's kind of damned if you do, damned if you don't. You need to have a certain length where it kind of doesn't suck here. It kind of doesn't suck here. So it's kind of in between of not sucking. So now we'll play that whole example slowly at first. Back down if you want. It's got a really nice rolling type of sound. I'll play a little bit quicker. Floating type of sound, so you really are not really hearing the tick 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 of the pick, which is cool to have. But this idea kind of enables you to have those sounds popping out. Uh, another idea we can take from this is kind of reversing it. And people always start from the bass. I don't know why. Like I've done in a lot of ideas here. How about we start this time from a note that I was popping on before and kind of give it like kind of idea. So we have a. Basically, it's just the reverse of what I did before with kind of two. And there's a really good pop pop that's happening with that hybrid idea going on. Here. You can really hear that. You just take it inside the next portion of the scale. Next portion of the scale. Next part of the scale. Back. Can you do that lower part, like the initial part? Can you yes. do that slower so I can so we can Definitely make sure the left hand fingering is uh, yeah sure is clear. So I'll take it just the bottom chunk of this thing, the low section of the scale. I'll notice one thing that's quite important if you're focusing on my first finger here at this point in time. I'm not jumping like this. I'm not going just to be able to do this. You're not going to have a lot of time when you're playing. So that's where this roll stuff comes into play again. But you got to watch. Like I said, it's not barred. It's going to get that crappy sound. A lot of it, again, is going to come from the mute that's happening on here. So a lot of this stuff is quite heavily muted. It might not sound so, but it really is to make it sound out. So I'll play it that whole example and I'll connect it together uh, at a relatively slow pace. <laughs> and jumping going on there. We'll be right back. So are you um, uh, are you purposely looking for that rhythmic element that's in there? Because I hear that all the time, all your stuff. I mean, it comes whipping out at you. Yeah, that's a big part of, of what happens. That sound, I really like the sound. Uh, of the reverse, or even like... 
right now, you don't. Do you have any of the piezo pickup in? Do you have both yes, channels? Yes, there is. There is a piezo going on here. It helps with the articulation of the sound. Actually. So do you always do that? Oh yeah.